Okay, so boom. You finally realize the power of emails and owning your own data. So you create a newsletter and get a landing page fired up. You send out your first email and bloop, it's in the promotions folder. Unless you're an e-commerce company, I'm sorry to tell you, but the promotion folder is not going to help you. This is why you should get ConvertKit. ConvertKit specializes in keeping your email in the primary folder so you can increase your open rates and communicate with your audience. They also have beautifully designed landing pages and squeeze pages for you to capture more emails. I personally love the fact that they have good support. Support for me is everything. If I have a problem, I need to know I can get someone on the line or have a video that answers all of my questions. Hustlers don't give up. They say, yo, let me figure this out. I figured it out with ConvertKit. And that's not the show. Hello and welcome to the Hustle Over Everything podcast. This is the podcast where you receive stories, tips, and strategies from entrepreneurs who've done it to help you grow your business and take yourself to the next level as a person. You can find us at 247Hustler on Instagram. Later today on the podcast, we have Tasha of Black Execs. Owen, how you doing, bro? How's your week? I'm blessed, bro. Um I actually kind of started my vacation days from work yesterday. So sure. I had a I had a half day. So I worked half the day then. The rest of the day I was um out and about, man, entering the city. It was kind of wet though, but man, the water was so beautiful, so serene. So I was just sitting there thinking and decompressing. Mm-hmm. And um yeah, bro, I'm excited for Christmas, man. I want to go back to Sarnia, back to the to the Bundus, you know, of Sarnia. <laughs> Spend time with fam. Spend time with the fam, bro. How about you? I'm good. I'm here. I'm here at home working. Uh, I'm excited. I'm about to start a webinar. Uh, my first um, workshop for uh, first webinar, bro. Yeah, man. First workshop. So I'm excited for that. Um, for for Wit Media, I'm gonna start uh, g- giving people like uh, some training and some you know value ads on getting their Facebook ads right for Boxing Day. Mm-hmm. You know, box is coming up and everybody's going to be shopping. So I'm excited about that. And we really just helping other people. So, yeah, man, I'm excited. That's about big, that bro. Sure. That's big. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm happy that you're back on the grind with that, uh, with which you're, you know, you're doing stuff to set yourself up and tell people like why, like you're going hard, man. You know, um, what, what, how, like what's the past couple months been going hard on your personal uh, business that you do with clients? Um, yeah, I'm happy to dive in, bro. So we've been working on like actually setting it up, you know, um, I, I've left my, 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 previous job and I'm excited to really like set up myself correctly. Mm-hmm. I was working with media for several years now, as I mentioned in the, um, build, uh, building a service business podcast. Mm-hmm. And I was finding myself like really working on, sorry, working in the business instead of on the business. Mm-hmm. So I really took a step back to figure out, um, what it was that I was continuously working in and find ways to actually uh, step out of that. So once I go back to market and really start helping people, I can be focused on actually growing the business and working uh, specifically on, you know, taking it to the next level um, and really delivering more value, you know? So like looking at like my units, you know, like what is my hourly rate? Um, what is something that I can really scale easily? What can people actually afford? Yeah. You know, so one thing I'm really excited about is the consultations. Um, I've started doing paid consultations um, for like 75 bucks um, because a lot of small brands, they can't afford, you know, a thousand dollar Facebook marketer. It's just not in the cards, mm-hmm. you know, and everybody's going internal. You get me? So yeah. um, I'd rather be able to help like the mom and pop that's about going into Facebook ads um, and needs to get that framework down right mm-hmm. to actually be able to speak to the audience correctly and spend that their three to four hundred dollars a month on their Facebook ads or even less and have them actually be able to build their business correctly instead of like hiring me mm-hmm. to pay like thousands of dollars just to do that like mm-hmm. it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense at all so I'm really happy to be able to help them because that mm-hmm. makes me feel like I'm actually doing like society good you get me very honorable yeah man um I, i'm happy about that. that it makes me feel internally good you know when you're working for these big ass companies you know and they're like all right 
go set go spend 10k on ads to bring people to the website and, and you just it, burn that cash and it's like nothing to them exactly it's just nothing to them you know they're they're legally um you know they're legal they're um this this you know writing off expenses you know mm-hmm. and and they're li- li- legally money money laundering you know mm-hmm. um so it's like it's not it's not as much of an effect they're just trying to fulfill like another ad campaign for another client so so and it's like sometimes this is a weird wheel where it's like you're filling in ads for agencies filling in ads for agencies filling in ads for the client <laughs> you know what i'm saying and yeah it's not no one's actually like really like making strong differences making numbers happen so the client looks at it and is like i approve mm-hmm. <laughs> you know and yeah. and but doing this is way more um fulfilling yeah you know so i'm really happy about it and i can really get like dive deep because some people be like hey what's a pixel i'm like what's a pixel <laughs> like you know yeah so. they don't know like they don't know the world of and the thing is it's you're opening a brand new world for their business which yeah. they might not even have thought was possible yeah you're right exactly yeah. you're the you're the uh you're the explorer you're exactly. leading their ship towards like a new uncharted territory bro without a doubt so that's one yeah. thing i'm really happy about man yeah. um and it's going good so far. You know, I've had really good reviews. Shout out to everybody who's done a consultation with me. Um, we I just wrapped up one with um with Cheryl from Please Notes yesterday, actually. Um, wow. shout out to Cheryl. Um, yeah, she was really good, but she she's um having some issues though. Um, and um her Facebook um page, sorry, not Facebook, her Instagram page got uh like shut down. What? You know? Yeah, it was at 14k, you know. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So I connected her with um with um like the Facebook support. And I'm reaching out to my contacts to make sure that she's straight and doing what I can, you know, to make sure she's good. What's the reasoning that they're telling her that they are shutting none. down your account? She, they just shut none. it down. They shut it down. So she, like they're saying that someone might be hacking to her account. So like um, try to like approve something. It might have been phishing. Um, so yeah, she tried to like get in. This has been shut down. If you Google it now, it looks to, like come come up to nothing. And that's that's one of the scary things about putting in so much work into these social medias, like spending a ton of effort creating creating posts building your engagement building your fan base and then it can all be gone in the snap of a finger mm-hmm. and what yeah. do you what do you have left with nothing if especially and i know you talk about email list imagine you don't have an email list exactly exactly this is this is a telltale sign of why you need an email list or some kind of customer base email list phone numbers you know anything man without without that you're just you're living on on, on a short fuse or or you know it's the nice they said uh it's like you're building um a castle with sand with sand exactly exactly so you, you need your own connections man without a doubt mm-hmm. so yeah that's one thing i feel like the joe Biden podcast needs I mean, this is part already popped into my head. <laughs> like I feel like he needs like he could I feel like he's gonna use like a, a statement away from getting like his Instagram shut down mm-hmm. and like being shadow banned on everything and being like, oh, what now? And just having the podcast. But like he needs some email things to talk directly to his folks. Yeah, imagine if he just distributed his podcast if he only had his like a link. Like imagine like Power. a secret, yeah. Power. Subscribe, subscribe, ten dollars a month. Or to listen to Joe Biden. Yeah. Pardon? Yeah, yeah if you went on, on Patreon. Patreon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thing is, though, then you're at the mercy of Patreon. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing, because the person of Patreon can, can, can kick you off. But he needs to build his own streaming network. I think which he is doing. Yeah, he's doing his own network um, on YouTube. Um, and it's, but it's on YouTube. But it's, it's, it's interesting, because like you never really have like a direct, direct connection. It's almost always through a third party. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you look at Alex Jones, like he has an audience. Um, I think as email list as well, though, you know, so it's, it's weird. You get, people are going to find you, though, at the end of the day. If it's hot, mm-hmm. they'll find you. Mm-hmm. So so the big takeaway is like have your own master list. Have your own. Ex- distribute, distribute it and you can actually accept your own payments and no one can come crashing. And, you know, it's a, it's a stable house. This foundation, this proper ventilation, walling, um, insulation. It's, it's a proper, proper setup. Mm-hmm. You know me? Yes, yeah. indeed. But yo, so, quick speaking thought, of this, go ahead, go ahead. Speaking of uh, this, is totally completely off topic. It's just a spur of the moment thought. Um, as we're talking about social media, I saw you posted Rob Ford, 
no, Doug Ford, he said the deadline, the lockdown is extended towards next year, which brings a thought to me, bro. Where are you getting your haircut? Because it's Christmas. <laughs> I'm that. Those are the. That, that's what I'm thinking about right now. I'm like, rah, like I'm looking shaggy. I'm looking not shaggy, yeah, but you know when your lineup starts growing in and it's kind of becoming like a rainbow. Don't kill me, a rainbow. That's hilarious. You, you know that meme of that uh, one kid. He has like his lineup is like one. They call it the uh, obtuse angle. Really? Because it's that wide. Ooh. <laughs> Yikes. Pray yeah. for that man. Sorry to that man. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. But yeah, yo, how are you getting Obtuse a line angle. on that? Obtuse two angle, bro. Yikes. All right. Um, I haven't. Luckily, I got a cut right before the lockdown. Literally a day before the lockdown, I got a cut. Same. Um, but yeah, you know what I was thinking, bro? I was thinking like, yo, Barbara should move to Richmond Hill. Because Richmond Hill is still it's open. still not locked down, hey? Not locked not locked down. Yeah. Um huh. yeah, I actually just came from um from like the London ways and they're like living life out there too. Um it's interesting. Halton Hills is actually booming right now. Like we drove past the the uh, the Halton Hills on the highway, like going to like London West Stockways. Mm-hmm. And it was packed to the brim. I'd never seen like how many cars in a in a mall parking lot before for that mall for Halton Hills. Wow. It's because you know, everyone's like, I need to go to the mall. So let's I need figure something. it out. Yeah. yeah. And I was thinking too, like, yo, where are single people meeting right now? Like off, like offline. Mm-hmm. There's nowhere. Like me and my girl were talking, like it's like, only, it's only North Hills really. Or like if you go to uh, Whole Foods, that's like the. Whole Foods. It's nicer. Whole you can, Foods. You can like maybe meet someone the, on the Loblaws line. You're waiting mm-hmm. to get your $5 box. Yeah. 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 Like, imagine even a hinge date or a bumble, you know. I mean, I'm a single guy. Shopping. Yeah. So how you how you gonna like entertain a girl? Oh. And bro, you can't even do coffee dates because it's it's a brick outside now. No, you cannot. You're interacting with them, and it's cold. Then after work, it's mad dark outside. Yeah. So what are you doing? No idea, man. No idea. Man, this is a treacherous <sighs> time. Bro. It's a treacherous time. Yeah, man. Shout out to y'all. I don't know how you do it, bro. I'm so happy to not be single. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I don't even want to think about that. These are the days you wish you're not even single anymore. You're just like, man, I wish I'm I had happy. like a girl. Or, um, but there is there is like benefits of being single, of course. There but, is, um, there is, you know. It it's just like right now it's looking bleak for <laughs> single people. Yeah, man. <laughs> like the, we're venturing into the unknown. Yeah, that's a fact, man. Speaking of that, man, let's get into the unknown. LinkedIn, uh, yeah, value that I got for today, man. Let's, you, you get, let's get back on topic, you know. Let's what I'm get saying? Back on topic. Let's get back on topic, you know. We we're venturing off. Um, so for the business tip of the week today, I actually uh pulled the audible last minute audible because I found something that was really interesting that I want to share with you guys. Um, I went on LinkedIn and I'm just going to share my screen because I want to actually record this and put it on social media mm-hmm. on the IGs. I found this uh actual interesting way of connecting with folk um on linkedin so a lot of times you're on um linkedin looking for people and but you're not really going into your own network a lot of times you're just going into um into new net new people right but a lot of times you're connecting with people you're making all these connections and you're like all right who do i have in my network so i tried to go die, take a di- deep dive into it and i couldn't really find anybody at first um till i looked at the filters and i was like oh this is pow- powerful so y'all, if you're not using this, you might be sleeping because I was sleeping. So I'm just spreading the knowledge that I gained. You're dozing so, off. For sure, for sure, for sure. So here's what I did. All right, so in connections, if you go to search with filters, you're gonna see a bunch of filters come up, which is awesome. Then you're gonna go to all filters. This is the button that I've never actually done. You go to search with all filters. Mm-hmm. And then you have the real power you can search for people in your specific industry, marketing, advertising, retail, internet, whatever, whatever, people that went to your school um, or a school in general. If you want to talk to people who went to whichever university that's in your network. What, what's most important, though, you can search by title as well. So one thing that I did is I just, since for the podcast and you know, looking for people who are founders, C- CEOs, entrepreneurs, all I have to do is type in title CEO. And I found 10 pages of connections that I don't know 
um, that are CEOs. I found like the literal Fortune 500 CEOs in my connections just sitting there. Mm-hmm. I, and you're I, not even using them, bro. Not even using it. I was like, and, what? And you have 2,400 connections, fam. Yeah, I have about 24. You know, I'm connecting out here. I'm connecting. I'm going, yeah, here, bro. Trying, you trying, have trying, a to make, trying to make a little dot. Yeah, you're trying to make a little one too. Yeah, hear you, man. <laughs> So, so that's one gem that I found that I just wanted to share with you guys. I thought it was very powerful. So um, that's my business tip of the week, y'all. Yeah, man. This is um, this is like a thing you can just abuse. Like, it's free. You have all these people who you're connected to. You can message them. And I was telling you earlier, man, I'm loving LinkedIn. I was saying, you know, LinkedIn to me now is like Facebook back in 2012. I'm addicted to it. I use it for work. I use it for personal stuff. I use it to share content. Um it's really, it's really, especially this year, they've done a lot of UI changes, which have made a better user experience. So I love it, guys. So yeah, go abuse that filter, abuse no excuse to get what you want. And uh, let's get into it, man. So yeah, man, thanks for that sh- sharing that tip out. My pleasure, man. Let's get into the Hustle Nation. <clears throat> you already know, man. It's Mr. Hustle Muscle on the mic here, guys, ready to give you that sermon that you need to get your week going. And uh, the tip of the week is having squirrel syndrome as an entrepreneur. And what I mean by squirrel syndrome is being distracted by things you don't need to be distracted about. So you're building a business. Let me give you an example of what squirrel syndrome looks like. So you're building your business. You are deep into it. You get an idea or you see something that is like the shiny object and you go towards that and you start working on that. You start pondering on that. Oh, maybe you should add this feature. Maybe you should add this feature. Oh, look at this market. That seems like a very good market to go after. And I can't say everybody's experienced this, but I myself in this entrepreneurial journey, I've definitely endured squirrel syndrome many, many times. And just being very open here, I've began my entrepreneurial journey back in 2012 when I launched Recruits Clothing. Then I went to Sneaker Deck. And after Sneaker Deck, there was a period where I was like dabbling in e-commerce and et cetera. But when I look back into my journey in entrepreneurship, I can definitely say I've had big doses of squirrel syndrome. For example, Recruits was a great brand. I loved it. But then the whole tech boom happened when I saw Instagram launching and they were sold for a billion dollars in under 500 days to Facebook. I was like, I abandoned all my plans with Recruits and I built Sneaker Deck because I thought tech was the wave. Started with Sneaker Deck over and over. Sneaker Deck, you know, unceremoniously ended, uh, but that's another story. But when I went into e-commerce, I was doing a lot of drop shipping. And drop shipping is one of those industries where you get distracted, you get brought into many different niches, and you're trying many different things at work. I launched a website called Living Crate, which was a uh, furniture website. And looking back, I was like, man, why am I launching this furniture website? It's just because I thought it made money. I wasn't even passionate about it, but I still did it. Then I was like, okay, this isn't working. I saw the sports niche is going to work. Then I was like, okay, abandoned living career. After I put in so much effort, I went and launched that one. So I was just losing focus and focus because I was just going after the shiny object syndrome. Uh, squirrel syndrome, which was you know, chasing that shiny object. And this is like a big thing that holds you back from success and actually stops you from realizing that true traction that you want um alex when i was launching live and create what did you think of that business that i that i launched i thought it looked great but i was very confused of your expertise yeah yeah i was i had no expertise i set up a great business with suppliers and it went well sold some money but made some money but the margins were thin Right after you do your Facebook marketing, after you do everything, you have razor, razor thin margins, and it just there was no point to it. So, what are the indicators of? Hold on, hold on, have, hold on. don't just brush past that. What was like an example of, of the margins you were having? So, for example, uh, I remember I was selling this ottoman. So, an ottoman is uh, is a side chair. It's like a side place you can sit on. So, if you don't have an L shaped couch, you can have like a little ottoman on the side where your guests can sit at. So, for example, an ottoman would be 120 bucks, right? So, for out of that 120 bucks, you would, they would keep 80 dollars, right? And you will keep the 40 out of that, right? So, they want you to sell 
their product, you keep the 40, they take the 80. So now I got to factor in all the expenses I got to endure to, to uh, within that 40 bucks. So I'm coming in this business with no expertise, no market traction, no like a new vendor. And I'm competing with the Wayfarers, the Strut Tubes, the Ikeas. Article. And got, article. And I got to market against them. And after Facebook takes all my money, I'm left with, not going to lie, bro, probably like a $20 margin on that. Right? Mm-hmm. So, and the more I advertise, the more money I was losing from advertising. So when I'm converting, I probably made less than $10, pro- like a $10 profit. Like it just did not make sense. So this is what happened when I was doing these type of businesses. And I want to get into like, what are the indicators that show you that you have squirrel syndrome? And I think this can really bring it all together to give you an example. So one of the things is poor planning. So poor planning, which leads to changing plans frequently. At the time, I was poorly planning like what I was doing. I mean, it looked great. Like I had a solid structure, but in terms of like the future goal, where was I going? Where was this business heading? I had no inventory. I had I lacked logistical planning with it. And I was just waiting to be crushed. And that's one of the things that made me stop this business. A second thing is burning through cra- burning through cash. So when you're doing these businesses, you're spending money on frivolous things like a lot of apps, a lot of software tools, and et cetera. And this is where it gets interesting. I mean, I spent over $4,000 on using apps, like apps, uh, access to these suppliers, and et cetera, bro. Yeah, four grand. So imagine that. Imagine that. four four k over a certain amount of time. And I was imagine changing plans from going to Living Crate and also doing B stock at the time, which was a sports one. So I'm trying to create like this holding company of e-commerce brands and I'm like funneling all my cash towards serving them. So one of the things that they had was to access these suppliers to sell this product, you have to pay a membership per month of at least, I think it was 120 bucks you have to pay to get access to these products. So I'm paying two subscriptions. I'm paying for Shopify stores. I'm paying for all these other Shopify apps. And by the end of it all, it was about 4K I had spent on these things. And I was just like spending money because I believe that this is what's going to allow us to get closer towards building a sustainable business. So burning through cash is one thing of squirrel syndrome. It's you get one app told by you, oh, Shopify app says this is the one best thing. And then you just put a subscription behind it, right? shiny object syndrome oh you think this thing is going to move the needle so you just throw money at it hoping that it's going to work out the third thing is not waiting until your original idea pans out so i moved on from living crate to starting b stock and i hadn't even given living crate the just due time for it to actually happen so i was like okay Maybe we need to start another e-commerce store so this other thing can take out, right? Like how, looking back, I'm like, man, what the hell was I doing? Like, this is totally not, like, I'm even, I'm upset with myself because I'm like, man, oh, you know better. By that time, like, you know, you're moving from a startup, you're looking to create success to where you're at. So I'm doing everything I can to get back on my feet. So this is an idea, this is an ability to see your plans out. Even in your own business right now, you might be doing something. And you might set up a marketing plan by someone comes and says, hey, I think we should do this. We should go on TikTok. We should go on this. And you completely abandon your original plans because you are excited about the next new thing that's trending right now. So how do you fix this whole squirrel syndrome? How do you fix this whole shiny object syndrome? Number one thing I'll tell you guys is you got to work in things that you believe in wholeheartedly. And that's what led me to starting over hustle over everything. Uh, before Alex came on board is because I asked myself, what do I believe in more than anything? Who am I? And I'm a strong believer in entrepreneurship. I love sharing positive energy and the hustle over everything brand came out of all this. Second thing, sit on new ideas before you launch them. Ideas are a dime a dozen. There's so many ideas you can implement in your business. There's so many product ideas you could launch, but Don't just launch them right as soon as you get them. Sit on them, marinate on them, talk to other people, talk to your team about them. And 
actually think it through before you do it because once you get into action with something, that action needs to, it needs life in it every single day for it to come to fruition. So sit on those things before you actually get to them. Goal setting. What are your goals with the business? Do you see a long time, long-term future with it? Is it a short-term thing that you want to do? You got to ask yourself, do you want to see this business um, materialize the way you want to see? It? And when you are there, how's your life going to be like? Imagine if you were to tell me, oh, a living creator is going to be a big thing. Would I be, am I, am I that passionate about furniture that I'm going to make uh, my whole expertise about furniture when I love de- decorating and furniture, but do I want it to be my life? No. So why would I do it? Why would I do, why would I do that? So with the businesses that you do, ask yourself, who do you want to be with it? Set the goals and the numbers that you want to achieve with this business and make sure that goal is backed by belief in it coming through and you actually believe in the product you're selling, believing in the company you're starting because that is the worst way to start a company is you're just doing it just to sell product, but you don't actually believe in it, which I believed in the idea of it, but I didn't believe in the mission. I was more of a mercenary instead of a missionary. Um, now I'm more of a missionary because we're on a mission to empower entrepreneurs around the world by building the largest network of entrepreneurs through our products, through our content platforms, and the events that we're going to be doing to bring entrepreneurs together to celebrate this journey of hustle over everything and et cetera. But overall, I say this whole journey was a blessing. Going through these distractions and syndromes, I don't think it would have happened. If, if that didn't happen, who knows if Hustle Over Everything podcast would exist? Who knows if um, what we're doing now would exist? But it all came from a frustration of everything that happened with losing money, being distracted, handling the failure of, you know, going, uh, working with my past partner and not having anything because since high school, I've always worked on something. So that period when I was not working on anything, it was like a depressing moment because I'm like, man, I felt like I lost my identity and I did not like that. So I was just hopping on anything that I could hop on just to feel as if I was fulfilled and I was still working towards my goal of being a great entrepreneur and businessman. But, um, as I say, perspective gives you um, with, with time comes perspective. You can only connect the dots looking backwards, but you can't do it looking forward. So if you're going through this, if you've gone through some certain fears, some certain mishaps, um, just have faith that there are going towards a beautiful end. And you're not going to see that until you look back and you say, okay, wow, now I know why I needed to go through that lesson. And I can humbly say that's why all these things happen. Like burning through that 4K still hurts me to today, but we're onto greener pastures. But yeah, guys, that is a Hustle Nation tip of the week. Um, just to summarize how to get over this squirrel syndrome is work on things you believe in. Sit on new thoughts and ideas before implementing them into your business and set concrete goals. Don't set a bunch of goals. Set two, three goals that you're going to hone in on and focus on that you mean a lot to your business and just double down on that and go in. And don't get distracted, have tunnel vision and see things all the way through before starting fresh with something else. And that is the hustle nation tip of the week. Um, Have a great week guys. And we will talk to you next time with the next hustle hustle nation tip of the week. Boom. Yo. And let's jump into the podcast. Hey, what's up, guys? To support the show for free, here are some main options. If you're on Apple, make sure you rate and write a review of our podcast. This makes a huge difference and helps support the show. If you're on Spotify, follow us. If you're on Google Play, hit subscribe and auto-download so you'll be notified and have a fresh pod ready to go when we drop. And lastly, make sure you share the podcast on Instagram or whichever social platform you use and tag us. On Twitter, we're at 247Hustlers. On Instagram, we're at 247Hustler. And on Facebook, we're hustle over everything. And now, guys, you've got to pay attention to this point. We just dropped a new newsletter. It's called The Underrated. It's a weekly newsletter that breaks down untold stories that highlight game-changing business strategies that shape our sports, 
music, and culture. It drops once a week on Mondays early in the morning to prep you for the week. So subscribe to that and we'll see you in the pod. Tasha, welcome to the show. How are you? Good, I'm good. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. You know, we wanted to have you on. We wanted to talk about, you know, your business, Black Execs, as well as, you know, have you on to talk about what you've learned, what you've studied when it comes to mm. um, Black business during these sale periods, how people have developed mm-hmm. their business in the last few years. So um, first and foremost, who are you and what do you do? <laughs> okay. Um, well, my name is Tasha. I work full time in the field of social work, but on the side, I have this platform called Black Exec, which serves as a static directory um, that has listings of Black owned businesses for now in the GTA. Mm -hmm. Um, In conjunction with that, we also do marketing for Black business owners, um, where we showcase their products, their services through either our one-on-one series or our Staying Connected series. Um, Our one-on-one series is a smaller production where we um, release those every Monday. And um, we just have kind of the business owners telling their story, whereas the Staying Connected, we release that to the first of every month. And that's more of like an in-studio production. Um, we get shots of them at the business. We get shots of them in this, um, in like an in-studio setting where they're sitting down and they're actually talking to the audience about their story. Um, and then we also have our LinkedIn articles, which we release um, every week. And through that avenue, we just talk about like black issues, um, black business tips, um, some things to look out for, things like that, um, that are just really centered around business and the black community as a whole. And yeah, so that's, that's what Black Execs is all about. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. I love it. We love the platform. Um, so talk to us about the, the genesis of Black Execs, right? What is it that you noticed <laughs> that brought you to, you know, start this platform? Yeah. So, um, as I was saying before, like I'm in social work mm-hmm. and through like my education, um, and leading me up into the fields of social work, uh, I really focused a lot of my studies on Black narratives and learning about the history of Black people. Um, and then as, as you begin to learn that, you start to look at, okay, so what are some solutions? Um, when I was doing my master's at Ryerson, I actually did my like major research paper on uh, Black wealth mobility. And through that, because I decided to make that my topic, I got access to like so much information that is you can't find on Google. Like you can't find these studies on Google. You have to pay for them half the time. And um, through school, I was able to learn about what are some of the mobilizing tools used to increase and enhance black wealth um, through generations, not just for like a sole individual. And one of the main indicators that came out and one of the main themes was entrepreneurship. So um, before I even was in the program, I was always trying to figure out like, okay, like, I love social work, but how am I going to focus it on Black people? Because mm-hmm. those jobs um, or those, uh, that kind of sector of my, that my profession is um, very low paying, right? So I wanted something that would, I could survive off of, and I could also be following my passion. And so when I did my major research paper, I was like, oh, this is perfect. I know exactly um, what direction I want to go in in terms of how I'm going to serve the Black community and how I'm going to continue to contribute to the Black community. And it's through mobilizing Black wealth. And and this is kind of how, um, because entrepreneurship is such a a major um, tool for it. I was like, okay, like, let's build something that supports it. Let's build something Mm -hmm. that centers it. So, yeah. Yeah. How's it going so far, in your opinion? Um, um, it's stressful. Like, <laughs> you know, the building is hard. It's it's such a <laughs> yeah. Like honestly, I'm impressed with myself in terms of like, just because like you know it was just an idea, and now it's like actually something that like it's like a website that I can go to and I can use, and like I'm getting feedback from people who are like, oh, like I love this tool. Um. And I'm meeting a lot of business owners and I'm learning a lot. Um, I would say so far it's going really well um, in terms of how receptive people are because as passionate as I am about the black community, um, 
like there's always like you know those doubts that you have like are people really that interested in buying black are people really like as invested as I am into the cause um but I've gotten like an amazing response from the GTA alone and so um I'm just going to keep like setting goals and working towards them and seeing where it takes me <laughs> most definitely most definitely that's beautiful man so starting a business is definitely challenging man mm -hmm. trust me being in the thick of it, it's it's stressful. It's in it's lonely, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> right? It's treacherous, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we even were having a chat yesterday, I believe, and we were just, you know, we we've been going hard for the past seven months. I'm always like asking, how do we get more traction? Yeah. Like, you see traction, but like, what is that one thing that's gonna elevate you? And you're always mm -hmm. looking for that variable that you can plug in. Mm -hmm. But honestly, it's all about taking shots of the dark, taking just. Yeah random shots con continually yeah. oh, and seeing yeah. what sticks a hundred percent i a hundred percent agree with that like a lot of times i'm just like i'm just testing the waters i'm like do they like it do they not like it mm -hmm. um especially when it comes to like marketing and like tactics for engagement and things like that like a lot of it is trial and error and it can get so frustrating sometimes but like when I look back, like some of the biggest barriers that I've been that I've been faced with actually redirected me, redirected me to like bigger opportunities mm -hmm. or like meeting people who like I wouldn't have been able to meet had I not encountered that bar barrier. Um, so it's like it's really like it's a journey. <laughs> it's a journey. It's just like taking it step by step. So like, yeah, I agree. Most definitely. So let's get into it. Um, which industry do you find that most of the entrepreneurs on your platform on or in? Um, oh my goodness, I would say definitely, okay, my top categories are hair and beauty, fashion and fabrics. Um, yeah, I would say, oh, and food, food, those three categories. Oh, I have like hundreds, 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 hundreds. of businesses. Yeah, and that's in the GTA alone, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And when you say food, are they, are they restaurant owners? Are they making, uh, foods that you can sell online like snacks and etc like which predominantly do you see these entrepreneurs uh side in hmm. in terms of how they set up their business in in the food and beverage industry hmm. Hmm. that's a good question um i would say independent caterers are mm -hmm. probably like the biggest category and then after that i would say would be the restaurants and then after that i would say like the snacks and like stuff you can buy online and things mm -hmm. like that um yeah I, yeah I would probably say that but food is a big big category black people love food and love making we love food. to eat we love to, <laughs> yeah, eat. I know. Love to eat you go to any family gathering you're just seeing a lot of food and extras you got the aunties like feeding mm -hmm. you or it's like are you hungry mm -hmm. you, look, you look like you're hungry <laughs> you have more <laughs> And you can't That's, decline. You can't decline. It's <laughs> insulting all. if you decline. Exactly. Exactly. No, I 100% agree. Speaking yeah. of that, speaking of food and barbecues, uh, currently what's really uh, polarizing in the news is the Adamson barbecue fiasco. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Let's yeah, talk about it. I heard about it. it. I heard you about, heard it. about it. All yeah, right. So yeah, yeah. for the audience that's unfamiliar, Adamson's barbecue is a restaurant in Etobicoke, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And uh, they have been, well, first to give context, even uh, off, um, previous context, we are currently under lockdown. The government has locked down all the restaurants, all of the small business um, shops. And the only stores that are con uh, still open, I believe, is the Bay and Walmart and Costco. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yep. Yes. And North Basically. Hills, of course, and Metro, and Love or opt opticians, mm -hmm. you know, so grocery stores and essential services, right? And the big. Um, and right now, Adamson has decided to open up its stores. And that has caused a fiasco among people in Etobicoke, where they are bum rushing the store. Uh, uh, the police have locked the doors to the restaurant and they have opened those locks they have shut down the restaurant and they've actually gone to the neighbor and busted down the drywall to get into the store or into the restaurant and access the barbecue to serve more people barbecue oh my god yeah i did not and, know all that <laughs> yeah you haven't you haven't you haven't seen the news that like of what the updates are 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, the last thing I heard was that he got went on like Twitter or whatever and was like, I'm over this COVID stuff. It's not fair. I'm opening tomorrow. And then um he opened, the cops came, shut it down, and then I heard he got arrested. But all this drywall busting down the door, I did not hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I follow an outlet called uh, Rebel News. I don't know if you guys have heard about it. But Mm-mm. these these guys are the only ones who are allowed to enter the Adam Sim property. So they have full access to interviewing Adam Skelly and everything about that. And it's actually hilarious um, how it's like TMZ, the way they're doing it. Like, it's actually <laughs> like you see it's it's all hell breaking loose. You're seeing them argue with the cops and everything. It's it's actually madness the, the way this thing panned out, like City TV, Global News, all these other characters. Uh, Adam Skelly was just like, no, you guys are not allowed on my property because you guys skew every word I say. So stick out on the on the driveway, on the on the roads because you're oh not coming God. in. So Rebel News is the only one who has access to uh, Adam Skelly. It's hilarious. Oh so the thing the thing that's interesting here, Tasha, is that as business owners, you cover a lot of business owners, right? And mm-hmm. Alex and I, and, and uh, you know, Alex is a partner. We were having a, you know, a heavy discussion last night. Oh, you know him personally. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 I- oh, no, no. Oh, no, no, Adam. No, no, no. Me and him were talking. No, oh, no. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Sorry. yeah. We, we were chatting. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, we, we, were know, chatting. We, don't, we don't know him at all. <laughs> you know, we are unfamiliar with him. But Alex, you live, you live like right down the street from Adam's. Adam's yes, is. actually, I'm, I'm in like, uh, biking you live in a Tobacco. Yeah, I'm in a Tobacco. Um, so I'm biking distance away. I don't know if I'll say walking. I don't know if I'd walk there, but but biking. biking. Yeah, yeah. a little bike. So, so we were talking, right? And we were like wondering. I personally, I support Adamson's opening because mm-hmm. I just was iterating the fact that I just don't think it's fair that Walmart's Canadian Tires and all these big box retailers such, such as Walmart are open. And they're not only selling essentials, but they're allowed to sell all other goods that are in the store, right? Which kind of mm-hmm. diminishes um, mm-hmm. competition. It makes them more of a monopoly, which mm-hmm. takes out the small business, which you're hindering from selling. Mm-hmm. And these businesses, they have proper protocols coming in. You can only allow, because these are small venues, you can only have a certain number of people. So they're like, okay, five people, six, seven, eight max are allowed at mm-hmm. a time get this the sanitizer on then you can come in bada boom bada bing you're in you're out so yeah. i don't understand why they're closed and then all these other big box stores are open so everything adam was adamson was doing i thought it was mm. polarizing because it really defied the law and i think someone needed to stand up and showcase hey this is actually wrong what you guys are doing if I am. I I do believe in the whole COVID, whatever it is. But if you're allowing Canadian Thai and all these other guys to do it, mm-hmm. cut off the other products which are not essentials. Cut off mm-hmm. the sporting and goods section. Cut off yep. the gardening section. Cut off yep. everything else, and only have your grocer side open because, mm-hmm. you know, it it kind of competition laws in this in the th- there are competition laws, and you're clearly breaking that. Mm-hmm. So, I was on Adamson's side and. If it was anybody else, I would have been on their side just because I just see what they're doing as BS. So we wanted to get your take on this. You cover a lot of business owners who are restaurant restauranteurs. Yeah. What do you think about this? What do you think? What do you see your partners uh, who who are on your website are are feeling? What are their thoughts? What are the sentiments? We'd love to know. Yeah. Um that's a load. Okay, so first, I'm gonna start off by saying, like, I definitely believe COVID's real. I'm not an anti-masker, um, but I do. I see what Adam is saying um, because it's so true. Like, for example, this is the holiday season. This is the time where, like, you know, locally owned gardens are making bank because people are purchasing you know, their Christmas trees and this and that and the other, right? And now everybody's just lining up Walmart to grab their Christmas tree because nothing else is open. Um, So I don't think that's fair. And I think also like when we look at um, the areas that Ford has decided to restrict, there are areas that are racialized. Like there are areas that are predominantly like with black people in it, like Etobicoke or Toronto um, was in the red zone. Brampton was in the red zone. Like just like, are predominantly racialized businesses are the ones that are feeling it the hardest. Um, And so 
I agree. Like if you're going to say um, only essential services, then you have to be you have to be diligent in ensuring that even the big corporations who have the flexibility to have everything are only able to sell the essential items, because then businesses that maybe um, don't make the cut won't survive. Um, and so, for example, like you were saying, like in the food industry, um, I know this one business, uh, Trias Aim, I believe, um, yeah, it was, it was Trias Aim, that was the name of it. They just opened a few months ago um, before COVID, like maybe like late 2019, early 2020. And they didn't make it through COVID. And now they're back to like independent catering. And so like businesses are being shut down, but then there's restaurants like McDonald's who have dining areas that can still run. Um, I understand that there, there needs to be some precautions in terms of uh, mitigating the effects of COVID, but, but the, the precautions that the government is taking is so ridiculous because I don't know how schools are still open. I don't know how um, all these other places are still able to function, but the very backbone of our, like, of our small businesses are being like taken right from under them. So, but I do think that it's very interesting um, that it's almost like it's this white guy that's getting away with it. Like I, I wonder like if a if a racialized or a black business owner was to come up here with the same attitude, how quick it would be shut down, how quick or like how how little support they would get, um, or how how that wouldn't be taken at, or wouldn't be as receptive. Um, I think that that that'd be something to be looked at and is very interesting too. I think we kind of deep down in our hearts, we know the answer to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, like the, the Jamaican restaurants, you mm -hmm. know, selling jerk, you know, the mm -hmm. Indian selling, you know, buttered chicken, mm -hmm. like instantly. Mm -hmm. you, you even have to say whatever. Yeah. Like, restaurant. Huh? Yeah. Indian restaurant? An Asian restaurant. Asian Chinese mm -hmm. restaurant. Oh. Oh. Oh, especially with <laughs> no. coronavirus being oh. like the source of yeah, being from exactly. Wuhan, China, like that would not be okay. it would not fly <laughs> at all, at all, at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, I think that he has a point. I definitely think he has a point. Mm -hmm. But I think the dangerous thing that he is aligning with is one the anti-maskers mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. thought process of um, going against the government for pro-COVID things. You get what I'm saying? So the government is saying, hey, stay inside and we're locking down. And he's saying, no, I'm still gonna serve people through COVID. So even though for uh, on a business sense, that mm -hmm. makes sense for someone else is like, hey, don't go to this party because we have COVID. Mm -hmm. You're like, no, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be Adamson. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna buck the government and, mm -hmm. and go to this party. You know what I'm saying? He's aligning with that mindset that's bucking the government to go with um, anti-COVID precautions. You know, mm -hmm. so um, that's why I think that it's wrong and it can be dangerous because it's the it's the um, the mindset that he that the precedent that he's setting. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, yeah. That's what's dangerous, and you, and that's being shown by all the anti-maskers that's going there to align with him. You know what I'm saying? It's not just people that are like business first; it's people that are like anti-COVID. You know, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's the real yeah, exactly rebelling against the government, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's where I think then mm -hmm. there needs to be. Uh, mm -hmm. I hate to say law and order, I hate to say that, <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? Because that's, oh, that's another, it's, yeah. but 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 honestly, like, mm -hmm. um, because if that sentiment keeps spreading throughout a society, that's just gonna amplify COVID even more, you know. Yeah. So that's where yeah. I think that's where I sit yeah. on it. I think I think it's oh, no, go on. no just to add to that bro there's a Costco right down the street from Adamson's mm -hmm. and there's 400 cars in the parking lot all of them going in eating off the, the the Costco hot dog sandwich bar that is in that's in every Costco if they can do that like why can't Adamson's be open mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying that that's what annoys me as an entrepreneur when I see another mm -hmm. businessman trying to make it trying to feed his family and you're removing what's it's actually in his own freedoms like it's actually in the in the in the charter mm -hmm. it's it's in the charter it's like this is that the, the mm -hmm. you have the right to free enterprise 
yeah. right? Like you have, that's in your constitution and you're stripping what is making this country beautiful as Canadians, right? The, 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 the true Canadian heritage of why like we're all here is because there's a chance of us to succeed and set up shop and sell and become whatever we want to be. And now you're just stripping away from that, which is just so un-Canadian. Like it's, it's so, you know what I mean? It's, it's taking away that freedom of, of being able to do it. And then lastly, when they ask about stats and everything like that, from what I've read and what I've seen and what I've spoken to all these businesses is that they don't provide them. They don't provide the data that they need to like explain why are you shutting us down? Why can Walmart and whatever be open Mm -hmm. like a salon like that only allows like a couple patrons in there. Mm -hmm. Let's say in a day you have like 50 patrons max. Mm -hmm. They can't even operate. Mm -hmm. We have hundreds of people running through Walmart. Yeah. And Costco and whatever, Mm -hmm. whatever, and they Mm -hmm. can buy whatever they want. And that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. it's just baffling to me, which Mm -hmm. makes me kind of feel like there's something going on behind closed doors uh it kind of makes me feel conspiracy like so i I think like i think this is definitely a fault of the government and not um and i think the fault of the government we're seeing having a ripple effect in society because there's no way that what is happening right now wasn't bound to happen right like we're seeing blatantly that certain businesses can't run and certain businesses can um, that certain businesses are targeted and certain businesses are actually benefiting like from this COVID situation. Businesses are making millions more while businesses or other businesses are being shut down. Um, and so that I think that's a fault of the government. I'm not saying Adam is not at fault, but I, I, I understand um, where he's coming from because I think a lot of business owners have that same like, what is going on? Like, are you kidding me type of attitude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. One thing I want to quickly add before we move on is, um, and I mentioned it last podcast, and I can elaborate a little bit more, is that I feel like it's saving face. You know, the, the, the rates are rising, the COVID rates are rising, so it's like, well, all right, we got to do mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. You know, we can't close down schools because you don't want um, all the kids working at home and parents having to work and take care of their kids. Mm-hmm. So what can we actually do? And they're mm-hmm. sacrificing small business as a scapegoat to say that I'm doing something yeah. um, instead of actually, you know, getting the big guns which is the schools mm-hmm. you know um so yeah mm-hmm. i just want to say that because i think that's where the government's coming from and it's not a good move um because mm-hmm. it's not it's probably not the the biggest effect on lowering the rates because mm-hmm. there's still going to be systems you know where kindergartens are kindergartens are going to school you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. they're gonna send their child to school is come back with someone else's mask on mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no. Sure. So, so yeah, I just want to mention that. But, yeah. um, so one thing I want to ask is that you know you've had a chance to like study and go through uh, other businesses that have seen real success, other black businesses. You know, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. what has stuck stuck out to you, and what have you been seeing them do um, throughout of the sales seasons? And yeah, what has been the general practices as well of what you've seen? Um. What I've noticed is depending on where the brand is at, they take a very different approach to how they market during the sales season. Mm. Um, More established brands can drop a sale the day of and make big bank, right? Like like if we look at like Telfer, right? Um, They are not even Telfer. Let's let's look at um, the crayon case um, by Superset, right? Um, she began promoting her sales for Black Friday like two days ago. And I know she made bank. Last year, she uh, made a million dollars. She broke a record of making a million dollars in 60 minutes. Um, and she dropped that sale. I, I, she was marketing for maybe the day before, two days before, dropped the sale on Black Friday, made a million dollars in 60 minutes. Um, and it was, uh, I think one thing that I've seen a trend in a lot of businesses is that during the sales season, they'll do like blowout sales. So like, you're kind of like your last chance to get these products before we transition to the new season of products or before we discontinue this line. Um, and so, um, almost like, it's almost like, you know, this is a time for businesses to get rid of their old inventory. Mm -hmm. Um, and so 
you know, taxing on the major sales, which also gets like the audience excited, right? Like it gets, it gets their customers excited um, because um, if like, let's say it's a brand that maybe someone can't afford typically on a day-to-day -day basis during these times, oh, I can snag something because it's 60% off, it's 30% off. Um, and even if it's something that is going to be discontinued, it's still an item from that brand that they wanted, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, most definitely, most definitely. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Um, and this is predominantly in fashion. Is there any other industry that you've seen like um, success with and makeup as well? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So there's, um, it's a smaller brand. It's actually in Toronto. Mm -hmm. um, it's Meals by Mill. So they've been around for about four years. They established in 2016 and that's the food industry. So she initially started off with catering. Then she moved on to um like cookbooks and now she does spices. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things that I noticed that she was doing, which I thought was like really cool and really unique is that she created like a VIP mailing list for exclusive mm -hmm. offers during the holiday season. And so you would need to subscribe to her email list to get these discounts, which I thought was really cool because now she's building her email list and she's also saying, you know what, because because you're you're joining the email list, here you go. Um, and then um, also something that I've noticed across the board, no matter the industry, is on the website, having that pop up that says save, like save 20% with this code or save 20% when you subscribe to our email list. Um, with smaller brands, so for example, like, um, like I said, Meals by Mills, or Poverich, um, which is another Toronto brand that's a, a bit smaller. They're, they've been around, I'm gonna estimate for maybe like five, three to five years. I'm not, I'm, I can't. Poverich, right? Yeah, Poverich. I, th I think I met them uh, about four years, actually that's gonna be five now at uh, mm -hmm. Branded TO, remember Branded TO? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I met the guy, mm -hmm. I actually met the founder there. He was just, I think, starting out and I was remember, man, just, this is yeah, actually- Ricks. Yeah, Rex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, 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 it's yeah. funny you bring that up. It's yeah. actually, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, like both Poverich and Meals by Mills are very like established brands in, I would say the GTA, like most people know like who mm -hmm. these brands are. Um, but in terms of like um, their worldwide presence, that's still something that's growing or mm -hmm. I, their, I should say North American presence is something, it's still something that's growing. And so um, with brands like that, um, longer, longer, a longer duration of promotion leading up to the big sale day is something that I've seen. And that's, I, I'm assuming that's because um, when you kind of like, it's almost like you're stirring the pot, like you're trying to get people excited for this big bang that's happening on the sale day. Mm -hmm. um, whereas like a bigger brand like um, Matt Brand, I don't know if you guys are familiar, um, by Brienne, Brienne, um, so she, she has a, she's also a clothing line, um, but she's had, like, people like Tiana Taylor, NYG, um, kind of repping her stuff, whereas, like, someone like her, she doesn't have to say anything until the day of and just drop, drop a discount, and you know she's gonna make, like, some serious coin just because she has that, um, North American presence already. Gotcha, yeah, yeah, so it's having a good lead time, so, what would you say like have been successful ways of leading up? Is it just like mm -hmm. posting on socials? Mm -hmm. Is it actually, um, you know, just saying, hey, join the email list or is it like providing value? Like what has been some of the uh, real aspects like the day-to-day -day aspects of leading up? Mm -hmm. Um, I would say posting on socials is a major, major, major way that, um, these businesses get their exposure. Um, people aren't taking like the old route of like advertising on TV or like advertising on a show or, uh, no, actually I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that, but like yeah, advertising on TV. Um, I've also seen some brands kind of like, you know, like the in between YouTube commercials, mm -hmm. like that's yeah, like, like the, yeah, exactly. Like the Google ads, the paid, um, the paid um, YouTube commercials, the Facebook ads, things like that. Um, very social media based where um, a lot of people are just interacting with that platform a lot. And that's a good way to intercept your brand and say like, okay, we have this coming up. Um, I think the route you take is very dependent on where your brand is at and like being honest about like, you know, is your audience big enough? Like, do you have an audience that's big enough to sustain a one day drop of like, yeah, I have the sale going on, right? Like, are people actually going to snag onto that? Or do you need to lead up? Um, some of the things that I've seen 
um, for the leading up is, um, like I said, the email list. Uh, like subscribe to the email list to get these promotions or watch out for this discount that we'll be dropping on the 25th um things like that you gotcha, know it, gotcha. it's, it's kind of getting tougher with social a little bit with um with major platforms such as instagram switching up their algorithms mm-hmm. um so i think a lot of these businesses have to be smarter with how they with they do it because especially as a as a starter coming up in the and you, as you're starting out your business, you might be five or six months in and you haven't really built enough audience to really, hey, put up a social. Like social is more of, it's like one of those things that you have to have it. Like, I mean, if you, mm-hmm. if you don't have it, you're pretty much archaic. You're, yeah, you're, yeah. you're a dinosaur. Like, I don't know what you're doing, <laughs> right? <laughs> so it's, it's tough, right? So you working with all these businesses a lot of them are starting up they're coming in the game and they're looking Mm -hmm. to cash in on this has there been a business who hasn't really built enough audience or traction they're you know they're in their newbie phase Mm -hmm. that's really splashed on black friday and succeeded or or the latter like you've seen someone who's done something really cool or try to do something cool but Mm -hmm. it failed and if, if it failed, why did it fail? Hmm. A f- kind of like a failed attempt at. Yeah. Um, I would say, yes. I would say um, the one thing that I've noticed is, and this is why I was saying earlier, like you have to be very honest with yourself. Like mm-hmm. if you don't have the presence or the audience to not build up, which I've seen some smaller brands do, which just like the day of, oh, 25% off. Um, and they don't get the sales that they maybe anticipated. Like you have to be honest with yourself, right? Was your audience waiting for that sale? Was your audience expecting you to drop a sale? Like was, was a sale something that your audience was looking for on this day? Or do you just happen to be many of the few brands that they were looking at? Um, I think, for example, like, um, there's this, um, there's this lady who does like artwork, right? Um, and there was no build up, um, for her drop. Um, there was no, um, kind of, you know, anticipation towards her sale. And so the, what I noticed was the engagement on her sale post the day of were very low, um, like maybe three likes. And that tells me, or like, uh, yeah, like three likes, um, and that tells me that, okay, like this audience wasn't really checking for you. Like maybe you needed to put a little bit more, a little bit more ammunition behind the sale to get people kind of riled up. Like, oh, you know what? Like I've seen, I've seen that they're going to go on sale. Let me, let me watch out for that. Let me, let me see what I can cop that day. Um, I know me and Alex, we've kind of spoken, we spoke about this like prior, just about, um, uh, wow, I just lost my train of thought. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> we spoke. Oh, we spoke about the the seven time rule, right? Where mm-hmm. um, you need to see something seven times for it to really stick. And so, if you're not a brand that I can just off top say, yeah, I, I want to get something from from uh, the crayon case, like I, I want to get their their lipstick, or I want to get I want to get um, a meals by meals spice, right? If if that's not something that's already in my mind, you dropping a sale a random day, I'm gonna be like, oh, okay, that's cool. Like I wasn't really looking for that, but yeah. that's a fact that's a fact mm-hmm. uh, and like for people that are working towards like uh having that lead up some of the things you can do is batch your post for a few days because keeping consistent every day is a challenge mm-hmm. over the last november i've posted three times a day on instagram and yo it's been a challenge it's hard i got, I got it done i'm doing it you yeah. know you but, got three more uh, days bro three more days you know going hard um but batching is a real big help. You know, you can batch like, like 30 posts and you can save them and post them for free on Creative Studio. Um, and you can also um, batch your emails as well to mm-hmm. have a, a email sequence leading up. Um, if you have under like, I think 3000, you can do on um, MailChimp. Um, if you're under a thousand, you can do on um, ConvertKit, which is our channel sponsor. And then mm-hmm. that'll be linked in the description below. Um, yeah, and yeah, you can uh, really dive deep into having a funnel going up to that specific day. So for Boxing Day, mm-hmm. if you're a brand, I would definitely suggest 
um, looking into uh, having a automated funnel up to that day, you know? So where you, or you, you can set it and cannot forget it, but set it and monitor it um, mm-hmm. up to that day without mm-hmm. a doubt. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, for man. Sure. And I think, I think the email promotions, like, I mean, email promotions is always considered like the number one marketing tool. Um, so having, building and using this time to build an email list and then also provide privileges to those who participate is a big way to establish a relationship with like your customer. Because if I get an exclusive offer, I'm like, oh, okay. That's a good thing I joined this email list. I, like, I, I wanna continue getting these offers. Um, and I know some like major brands that do that or like um, major brands that will, they'll set up their website so that like, like let's say you create an account and you're a frequent shopper. For being a frequent shopper, you get like exclusive discounts just to get you to shop more. So things like that, like really rewarding the people who support your brand, looking for different techniques to do that is so, so effective. That's a fact. What do you say to people who have service businesses? Because I'm sure a lot of the people who come on to, you know, Black execs are solo entrepreneurs, right? Mm-hmm. And they might mm-hmm. not be in food, but they're looking to build up that. What are some things that, you know, you could advise those people who have service businesses? They could be, uh, what's a solo business I can think of? Perhaps like you're a digital marketer, you offer services like that. Uh, and et cetera, like essentially people who are riding solo and they provide a service using their own, you know, uh, their, their own hands or they're using their own Talents, intellectual, exactly, skills. right, to do yeah. something out. Like how can yeah, they yeah, promote yeah. during this time and take oh, advantage yeah. of it? Yeah, for sure. Um, I would say that for, uh, for, for the service kind of industry, I would say that um, because it, there's not like necessarily a product that you're selling you're selling a skill or service you can provide um i think really big cuts or a bundle deal um on on these days is really really effective especially if it's something like let's let's say photography right like let's say i'm a photographer i'm a freelance photographer and on black friday if you booked today you can get 50 percent off on uh 50 edit photo shoot, something like that, mm-hmm. right? Um, something like that where it's like, and and oh, like, you know, you can schedule the shoot anytime between today and maybe next year or today and six months from now. Um, and, and you'll be eligible for this discount. I think things like that um, are very effective because if I need a photographer, I need a photographer. I'm not, I might not have been waiting on Black Friday to find a photographer, but if I'm browsing and I come across you and I'm like, oh, and he's only doing this for one day. Okay, no, no, no. I got, I got to book him, gotta right? Book like, this, yeah. I got, I got to get this. And like, you got to play on, on your, um, on your audience's like, like uh, anxiety, like, or like, like um, anxious scarcity. You know, yeah, like, like you know, this is gonna be my last chance. Like, I have to get this. Um, yeah. And I think like service for service providers, that's what you kind of gotta, you gotta, that's what you gotta play with, like. Mm-hmm. making people feel as though this is like a one-time thing get it now or miss out um and i think if you do that enough but spaced out um with enough time in between you'll eventually um start to see if not the first time around you'll eventually start to see traction picking up with that technique mm. got it got it got it mm-hmm. yeah i couldn't agree more to that um at the end of the day when with a product it's all about um scarcity and showing that there's value here that you can't miss out on without a doubt um yeah a prime example of that actually is an influencer i, I had um a, a deal with one time i was working mm-hmm. with a brand and he went to influencer collaboration um and a facebook ad to go along with it so she had like a one-time deal um mm-hmm. to do like a post for half off so i was like all right Let's go. Yeah, and did exactly. It, you know? um, and I took advantage <laughs> of that. So without a doubt, um, as long as there's scarcity, scarcity in it, as mm-hmm. well, um, the service-based businesses, um, they're predominantly packaged unless it's a custom thing, you know? So when you package something like that, then you can look for how you can effectively um, market that out. What's good about it too is that a lot of people are, you know, they're um, stalking you online. A lot of people mm-hmm. are, online mm-hmm. to, to <laughs> they won't even follow you 
you know they are they are freeing you all the time you freeing know. you know <laughs> they'll go through like that one friend they'll go through their finsta and then i i, I didn't put up that the link or, or that call to action and suddenly they're like oh yeah you know what i'll actually do it you know like even like i remember um we asked uh so who should be on the podcast and we got a guy uh, make, make a suggestion he dm'd us he had zero posts zero followers and like zero nothing at all he just had an account to just be on instagram <laughs> a whole person a whole entire person you know with nothing uh, and i was like I wow like yeah the the, the yeah. power of it because people are, are out there stalking for real so take mm-hmm. advantage of that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i agree i agree yeah, yeah. So and you, you, got, you got to make it like worth people's while, right? Like you can't say like, when it comes to like service providing, like you can't say like, oh, like 10% off. Like, no, 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 no. You got to, you got to bring that up a little bit to make people feel, because you're competing against people who are like doing like 30% off, 15% off, 50% off. So if you come with your 10%, they're going to be like, that's not even tax. Like, you know what I'm saying? So coming with something valuable, like, like going back to what you were saying, like bringing value to the promotion that you're doing, not just putting something together to slap it together for the holiday season or for the sales season. Mm. Yeah, you got to do things that move the needle, you know, like yeah. people, you got to get people like, you got to wake them up from their slumber. Like, yeah. You got to look <laughs> your side. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. people are so used to doing the same thing over and over. They have their brands, they have their relationships, they get their emails, like mm-hmm. to get them to switch their behavior to go to you, you got to do, you got to do more. And then once you get yeah. them in, then you gotta just nurture them to stay. Yeah, you gotta mm, make them you gotta, feel you nice. Gotta, you gotta <laughs> just like make them feel good. Here's a first time, second time shopper. Exactly. Right? You gotta do the exactly. most to make them stay. It's competitive out here, especially it like is. people competing online now more than anything. It's like you gotta do more and create a great experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One thing I want to add on to that I've noticed um, has been a great benefit is add-ons. Um, we haven't really talked about that. Some people actually don't even do sales on Black Friday, but they'll do add-ons, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, they won't take a percentage off, but they say, hey, if you buy one, we'll, we'll give you another, or mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. we'll add a whole other product, a complimentary product on top of it. So it's more of a value add that way. Mm-hmm. Um, also, what's a, what's a great deal, so this is a great finesse. Uh, not a finesse, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not trying to man, get it. Like you're trying to swindle someone, bro. Yeah, nah, nah, not, not a finesse, not a finesse. A good value add. You know what I'm saying? Finesse. <laughs> it's, it's e-content. You get me? So you're creating uh, candles, uh, have a playlist to go with the candles, or even better, like you are a service-based business, have an ebook that you created to go with that you know, and have value to go with that specific product um, mm-hmm. that is beneficial to that customer, you know? So mm-hmm. uh, um, I think combining um, your different talents can mm-hmm. create a better value package for a consumer during a sales season. Mm-hmm. I completely agree. Like this Black Friday, Cyber Monday kind of stretch, um, my partner with like eight businesses um, and they created promo codes for black execs um, during this time um, so that we could then go forward and market those specific brands and say, hey, like check the check these brands out. And um, there's this one candle company that recently registered with us, Infinity Ashley Candle Co. And one of her, um, one of her, her promo code was buy two of the new collection candles and get one from the fall collection free. Or sorry, buy two of the old collection and get one from the new collection free, right? Mm -hmm. And I think there's so much she's doing with that promotion. Like one, she's getting rid of old inventory, right? Two, you know, you have your add-on. So it's like, oh, like I buy two, I get three. Like who who couldn't use like an, an, an extra candle? Mm-hmm. And then like on top of that, um, you know, you're getting access to the new collection um, in a way that maybe you wouldn't have before. Yeah, spice, yeah. spice, 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 spice. Thought it out. All right, so as we work towards back, wrapping up, um, what businesses are, do you have your eye on? What businesses do I have my eye on right now? In terms of what, like purchasing from them or like working with them? Both. Let's go into both. Okay. Um, so purchasing from, hmm. One business that I have my eye on is um, 
I feel like I'm such a female, so like guys are gonna be like, ah, oh, whatever. But it's a makeup brand <laughs> called. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell she loves her makeup without yeah, a doubt. Yeah, yeah she oh, like, and that brand, and then this brand, <laughs> and the clean brand. Like, oh, she I want this makeup. brand and that yeah. other brand. She loves her makeup for sure. Um, but it's actually a girl I went to school with. She has a brand called um, Dark Angel Cosmetics, mm. and um, she like caters to like black like darker skin tones um so i've been eyeing her stuff and she's coming with some pretty cool stuff like like powders and things like normally when people launch makeup brands it's just like lipsticks and i uh, not, not even eyeliner like i would say it's like predominantly lipsticks lip glosses very like basic things like that but she's branching out into like kind of like a full service beauty makeup line so i'm i've, I've had my eye on her um another brand that i've had my eye on um is this tattoo parlor they're actually slipping my mind uh what are they called yeah shout out to all the tattoo uh, artists out there right I'll do, I'll, we'll, we'll put it like that because you know it hasn't been solidified i'll leave it i'll leave it at that so it's a all tattoo right. parlor that i um i really want to work with um and just capture footage from their brand because they've had some pretty like pretty cool people going through there like I know they had Steph Curry in there the other day getting a tattoo and um like really cool things like that so um another brand that I'm kind of hoping to work with is like this bookstore called um uh a different book list uh I would love to work with them or a knowledge bookstore that that would be really cool I think capturing a black owned bookstore would be super super cool mm -hmm. so hopefully in the future you know, I'm speaking into existence. You'll see us collabing. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, 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 awesome. Cool. What about you, Owen? What, what, what businesses are, are on your radar? Man, business, first business on my radar is our business. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Girl, <laughs> my eyes. Yeah. Of course. I was like, I'm out of our business, bro. What? <laughs> uh, but in terms of shopping, man, uh what else uh, you know the thing is man i like shopping from independent brands I, I mean a lot of the stuff a lot of the art you see in my place is from etsy designers right mm -hmm. all like the the muhammad ali the the malcolm x the jordan those are like all etsy people so like i'm, I'm really like focusing on finding gems from these type of uh, artisans and etc right mm -hmm. um in terms of brands other than that, man, I think what I'm shopping for is just home decor. I'm in that stage where I'm like looking that's for home dope. decor stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, I think I have all dope. the clothes I need. And, mm -hmm. and the thing is, even if I get the clothes, where mm -hmm. am I going? Yeah. Facts. Like, <laughs> oh, it's so it's so like disappointing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like all the fly clothes I bought to wear to the office and et cetera, I can't even wear them. They're just in my closet collecting dust. So yeah, all I'm shopping for is cool pieces for the home, little decor, like a table or... We got a home decor section on Black Exacts. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I'm going to check that yeah. out. I'm going to check that out. Oh, yeah. Oh. Like mats and et cetera mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. little candles you know, to spice up the, the, mm -hmm. the aura in the room. Yeah. So th that's what I'm shopping for. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, was kind of hoping for some stuff to go on sale today on uh, on Etsy, but some of my favorite shop owners didn't even like they Doing even they, they, it's just such a pump fake like they're like yeah yeah black friday and boom like you have like 15 percent off like come on bro you know what i'm saying like see this is what i was talking about you can't disappoint the audience you with can't 15, 10 off like come on yeah now. <laughs> and i had this one art piece like in my cart for three days i'm like okay okay they're gonna like go on sale they're gonna go they have to go on sale <laughs> i go <laughs> keep refreshing nothing I was just done. I was like, oh my God, you know what? I'll save for later. That's yeah. what I did. So I hear yeah. That. Yeah. I hear that. Um, on my end, man, me think. It has been much. I'm I'm buying like tech. I'm buying like I'm buying like tech gear right now. So it's not trying like, to strap up. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm buying stuff for my camera. I just bought a laptop and a camera and I'm like making sure I have everything for that. So uh, maybe I'll see if there's like a, like a camera case as that's a, by a, a black owned business. Oh, mm. but I'm going to re-up on shea butter though. I'm about to oh, yeah. Oh, you can never have too much shea butter. 
I love my shea butter. Yeah, and the <laughs> supply. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Other than that, though, I'm I'm chilling. I'm chilling. I actually had a pair of um sneakers that I actually returned because I was like, there's no point of me having this. Mm-hmm. It's not flipping. It's not um doing it's anything. So sad. Yeah, and it was by yeah. a black um artist too, um designer. Sneakers? Yeah. What I was the name? Kirby Moss, um or Pierre Moss, sorry. No. You ever, you ever yeah. heard of Pierre Moss? Oh, fam. That's why. Nah. That's how Alex reacted when I told him I didn't know Pierre Moss. Was, really? <laughs> Have you ever heard of Sia Collective? Yes, I heard of Sia Collective. Yo, I and just his, found ah, his shoes yeah. are so cool. He's a fire. Um, Yo. I mean, Sia Collective on. <laughs> no, I don't know. Shout, shout out Sia Collective. Um, Yo, got to come on on the podcast. He Stuff makes um he makes a, a, a range almost everything actually. Yeah. Um, he had an interview on the Breakfast Club where he dived deep into his business. He has re- really interesting play. Um, one thing that he does that's very interesting is that he has a lot of pre-orders and he actually like have transparency with his products. Mm-hmm. So he, like um say hey this mm-hmm. is dropping on this day and it's for pre-order and then he'll actually order them from the factory and like, you get in like six months. Um, mm-hmm. this, and then he actually get some of the pieces too and then drop it on a specific day and, and then you can mm-hmm. order it. Um, very low, low, qu- low um, quantities. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So yeah, and it's dope stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, he had people. He's had people call, um, copy him. So he named one of his shoes called the Vulture. So yeah, it's 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 interesting. He has an interesting mm-hmm. uh, thing. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to black designers, this is my shit. I actually went to school for fashion. Um, you know, oh. So there's you know SB Badu, Get Fresh, mm-hmm. um, Kirby Moss, Telfair, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think. Off top, Oswald Boateng still popping out here. Yeah, um, Hood by Air, um, mm-hmm. and um, what's the wall, dude? Cold, a cold wall. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I'm before you even continue. You said Telfair. Is it? I say Telfar. Am I wrong? I have no idea. Okay, because um, <laughs> I was like, damn, was I butchering this name? <laughs> all I know is Pierre Moss is Pierre Moss, and he really okay. about that because that's his mom's name. Ah, uh, so, uh, yeah, he he cares about that. I don't know about Telfair though, or Telfar. No. I don't. Telfar. <laughs> yeah, Telfar sounds more luxurious, you know. Telfar. Right? You know what I'm saying? I can hear some. I was trying to say quoi. This is Telfar. This is Telfar. Excuse me, can you ask my Telfar? Please? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's funny. It's my Telfar. You know what I'm saying? That's a Telfar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you just say like Valley Village. Yeah. Yeah. Someone books. Oh, where'd you get that? Oh, I got Valley Village. Oh my gosh, yeah. I've heard of Village. Uh, what is it? Village, Village, or uh, I don't remember. Valley, Valley, or uh, Vivi Boutique. <laughs> you know what I'm saying is the way I say. It. Got it from the double V. You know, like, word. Yeah, don't sleep on Valley Village though. They got some gems. Listen. Yeah. Listen, I got a Burberry sweater there for eight bucks or seven bucks, six ninety nine. Exactly. You can so, get yeah if you if you have the patience for it. What that can be the spot. Exactly, that can be the spot. First word, year, word. my boy, I used to stay in residence. Alex, uh, Alex Rance, he got like a Louis Vuitton bag for was it? Did he get it? I think no, no, I don't think he got it from Valley Village. But he, we were doing door to door sales, and then. We were doing like door to door at Rosedale in the Rosedale mm-hmm. neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And um, he comes across this one old lady and brings him in the house, gives him cookies and whatever. So, oh, yeah, like I'm moving out. Like, do you want, do you see anything here you want? You can take it. He spots like a Louis V bag, takes a Louis Vuitton bag. And, and then we wanted to sell it because we're broke like first year students. So I remember he puts up the thing in Kijiji in the night off. It's around like 8 p.m. And then he gets a message from like this one Chinese guy who wants to buy it. So he's like, okay, can you meet up at like 1 a.m.? So Alex, Alex texts all of us. He's just like, um, yeah, sure, whatever. He's just like, okay, so 600 bucks, like max, I'm going to give it to you. So he calls us all of us. He's just like, hey guys, I'm trying to do this deal at like 1 a.m. in the morning. This guy can only meet up today before he takes off. You guys have to come and wait with me. So we're at Sala Rice in campus, like, waiting and waiting and waiting for this guy to show up he finally shows up he's he's being driven in like this white van he opens the door he sees all of us chilling there he looks at the bag he opens like an envelope gives us like gives alex the 500 bucks then he just hops back in and he goes it was the most craziest exchange i've ever witnessed before we were just like 
Yeah. <laughs> in a white van? In a white yeah. van, bro. He just pulled Listen. up and, you know, he looks mad sketch. Yeah, it's on sketch. Yeah. yeah, but, you know, Alex got his money, which matters, and he got mm-hmm. rid of the bag and... Honestly, I was waiting. For, I was waiting for you to say he came, snatched the bag, and cut. Cut. Yeah, <laughs> we're all saying that, or like, or like some boys was after no. him. After. Yeah. Was, no what's the plot twist here. No, no, there's no plot twist. It's just the the, the plot twist is how we did a transaction at like one thirty a.m. in the morning, right? Yeah. But there was three of us, so mm-hmm. he, he Alex needed backup, and we were mm-hmm. there for him, and. um I've just never done anything that sketch before in my life in terms of exchanging <laughs> product for money. Like it, it seemed like a drug deal happening. Yeah, but, no, you know, it definitely sounds like what. Yeah. yeah, man, I don't trust no steal. type of white van. Like, yeah, nothing. like I don't. No matter what it is, like I don't care. No, if it's, no, you know who they're packing in there. You no, know, no matter what, I don't trust no white van. You know, mm-hmm. but that's that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But guys. Exactly. Tasha, thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. No, for real. It was fun. It was fun. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, it was good. You had some good jokes, man. Exactly. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this wraps up the show. Uh, I'd like to end it on this note, as I always do. The hustle is what you can't control. So control your grind. I control your life. I'm Alex. And I'm Owen. And, I'm and that's Tasha. hustle over at and she's <laughs> Tasha. Yes, you can't. You gotta stop doing that. You can't do that to gas. You, 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 you gotta, to you gotta get boy. them in the mix. Where, right, where? Right. Let's run it back. Let's run it back. Let's run it back. Let's run it back. All right, guys. The grind is what you can't control. So control your grind and control your life. I'm Alex, and I'm Owen, and I'm Tasha, and that's hustle over everything. Peace. Peace out. <laughs> Boom. Oh, man. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good, guys. Thank you so much for listening. The conversation continues on our Instagram at 247Hustler. We post very frequently. And be sure to check out our merch at hustleovereverything.co. We have some amazing sweaters, hats, mugs, and a lot more. Lastly, our Proud to Pay program is linked in the description below. Thank you so much for your support. Talk to you next Monday. Peace.